Representative Stalker, if you and your guests would come to the table, please introduce yourselves for the record, and then you may move on with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee for allowing me to be here for uh, before you today. Uh, my name is Sarah Stalker, and I represent the 34th House District in Jefferson County. Um, I do want to just make a note that Representative Kim Mosier is a primary co-sponsor on this, and her intention is to be with us today if her schedule allows, but she is running from room to room, so she may join us um, at some point. But I'd also like to introduce uh, Ananisia Williams. I'll let her introduce herself a little bit more. Hi, good afternoon. Oh, sorry. Oh. Good afternoon. My name is Ananisia Williams. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in the state of Kentucky. I specialize in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, and I'm also currently a doctoral candidate at the Spalding School of Social Work, and um, my research is on maternal health disparities. So we're here today to present House Bill 286. Uh, this is a simple bill that seeks to just add pregnancy to the established list of qualifying events for special enrollment. Motion on the bill. Do motion on the bill from Representative Frazier. I have a second from Representative Roberts. Representative Stalker, you can stop there and we can answer questions or you may proceed if you wish. I will, I will leave that to the committee. If people have questions and you'd like me to go ahead and, and finish or if there aren't any questions, <laughs> I'm fine to stop. Representative Gooch has a question. Not sure that it's a question. Um, I mean, I, I, I would hope that we all understand what insurance is. Um, insurance is a contract where you, you transfer your risk to, to someone else, the insurance company, for a premium. That's what, what you do when you buy insurance. Um, now, there's some basic tenements in that is that in order for someone to accept that risk willingly, one is that the, the, uh, um, the, the, the outcome cannot be in, it has to be in doubt. The outcome has to be in doubt. In other words, uh, you can't go out and buy a homeowner's policy when your house is on fire. Um, you can't buy a cancer policy after you've been diagnosed with cancer. Um, to say that the fact that you got pregnant is a qualifying event, and now you can go out and purchase an insurance policy, uh, it just says that there's no question that you've taken away that part of the outcome being in doubt because you know you're going to have, have, you know, you're pregnant. And uh, um, I understand that you have qualifying events in large group policies because there, there's a thing called law, law of large numbers where you, um, uh, you know, they, if you have an employer that's got 500 employees, uh, the fact that one person new comes on that has to, happens to be pregnant or maybe even have pre-existing conditions or they have other types of things, that's okay because you're insuring enough people. But certainly for individual policies, uh, I don't think we can dabble in, in something like this and actually change what is the very definition of insurance, which involves the transfer of risk from one party to another one on a contractual mutual basis. So I, I just don't think I can support this, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I'd like to respond to Representative Gooch because I. I understand that uh, perspective and concern, um, and it certainly isn't the first time that it's been mentioned, but I do want to bring uh, something to this committee's attention, um, which is the fact that uh, currently right now, as, as it is, having the, the birth of a baby is a qualifying life event. So if I was pregnant today and at the end of my day I headed to the hospital and had a child and I was without insurance, that would be a qualifying event for me then to enroll in coverage for myself and for baby. What this bill will allow us to do is saying actually being pregnant, when you find out that you are pregnant and you're about to expand your family, if you do not have insurance at that time, this would trigger the special enrollment period to say, gosh, it really makes sense for us to make sure that mom and baby can get prenatal health care in advance. 
instead of rolling the dice and waiting for nine months and just hoping that there isn't something um, from a health perspective that, that comes down the pipeline that is going to not only cost that family, but will also cost the state as well. So um, I just think that's an important clarifying point in case that was an issue for anybody else. This is just about trying to be proactive instead of reactive. Um, we also know that s several studies have found that state dollars that are spent on prenatal care services, they save the states between $2.57 cents and three dollars and 38 cents in future medical costs so this is really about being proactive and making sure that uh, that we have healthy babies and moms and that we can drive down those mortality rates that we unfortunately are pretty famous for representative roberts thank you um the sponsor of the bill I think did a great job of answering that question which i wanted to address as well i'll just add that you know some of the other qualifying events are divorce, marriage, uh, as she mentioned, the birth of a child, um, the death of a policyholder, job change, and even moving. So we have plenty of these other qualifiers. I think this is, uh, to her point, just another way for us to ensure good maternal health care for the women of our state and the families of our state. Thank you. Representative All. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do other states already include this? Like, we're, I, I ask this question a lot specifically in this committee, uh, Mr. Chairman, like the bell curve, uh, would we be number three or would we be number 47? Or do you know anecdotally how many other states already include this as a qualifying event? Yes, we would not be the first. Um, several other states um, have already added pregnancy to the list of qualifying events. So that looks like New York, Connecticut, Washington, D.C., New Jersey, Maryland, and Maine. So we could fall right in line with those. Representative Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Gooch kind of got my mind wandering when he was talking about, uh, you know, the events. Um, is there, do you have a, like an impact study on the increase of cost of insurance for, say, a group? If this, if this happens, you know, uh, typically uh, events cause increase you mm -hmm. know we know that on on what he was mentioning homeowners uh how will this affect if we pass this bill will there be a increase in everybody's coverage because we're picking up a new area is that there so yes there is a fiscal note attached to this bill um so you probably have a copy of it but just to highlight to your point we're looking um for the changes that we're talking about today it is 27 cents to a dollar 17 increase per member per month for health um, benefits so that there there is a small increase but when you look at those numbers that seems pretty reasonable to ensure that somebody can access prenatal care to keep themselves and baby healthy okay follow up just to make sure i understand what we're doing here you're you're saying that uh, a person that has no coverage at this time becomes pregnant can go receive coverage correct okay and so this they had the opportunity before pregnancy which they do to have coverage so um you're saying there's a large pool of women out there that are not preparing for this or this is the unprepared or the ones that happen to become pregnant now they have an option i mean can you get into that just a little bit i know you have sure. a reason for your bill yes and, so, and it sounds reasonable to me i'm just uh, trying to figure out um kind of what representative gooch was alluding to and, yeah. and can you get a little more depth in depth on that, that yes i will do my best and if if i'm not hitting on something please let me know because i want to make sure that everybody f is comfortable and confident with what it is we're doing here today. So as it stands right now, if you are somebody who qualifies for Medicaid, there is never, you never need a special enrollment period, right? It's open all year round for you if you qualify financially. Um, for individuals who make too much money to qualify for Medicaid, but they may not make enough money to buy um, a plan on the open market at full rate, they have the ability to purchase um, 
through a qualified health plan and, and get a little bit of assistance from the state as well. So if I'm an individual and I say, I need health insurance, um, I've lost my job and I didn't have the opportunity to COBRA or I couldn't afford to COBRA. Um, I could apply for this for a qualified health plan and maybe I'm just going to make up a number here. Say it's $500 a month to cover myself and my child. But the state will look at it and say, yeah, but you don't make enough money to even pay the 500. You make enough to pay 300. So we'll give you a voucher for the 200. So it's it's a way to supplement it to make sure that we keep Kentuckians insured so that they can see their doctor on a regular basis catch all those things that are preventative so that we can bring down those costs um, and avoid people going to the emergency room for things that, right, for care that they probably should have been maintaining this whole time. Um, but it would, it would apply to everybody, everybody outside of even Medicaid as well. Does that answer your question? Representative Lockett. So kind of piggybacking um, off of that just a little bit of, of course, all of us here in the room obviously know the purpose of insurance, how insurance works in terms of it's a pool of people that pay into a fund or, or, or um, into a group. And then when someone out of that group needs coverage, it, um, it pays. Uh, so my question in this case would be, and I think you kind of just answered it, um, the people that uh, have the option. So in other words, um, if, if I'm going out and looking for, for coverage, I can choose um, maternity coverage or, or I can decline maternity coverage. Obviously, if I decline it, um, it it's, it's not going to cover that. Would this bill, if I declined maternity coverage and then um, my girlfriend or wife or someone gets pregnant, then would I be able to go, oh, hey, I've had this change. I declined the coverage before, but now I need it. Please please tell me how that would work. So that's a good question, and I'm going to have to follow up with you on that because the honest answer is I think the answer would be yes, but I'm also not aware that you have the ability to waive coverage when it comes to pregnancy. You either have and now. Now, what I can tell you is I spoke to somebody just earlier today who said, I had one job stop, and before my second job began, I went and purchased a short-term plan, right, so that she could stay covered in the event of anything. And what she was told specifically was, just so you know, we will cover you, but we will not cover you if you get pregnant, because it was a short-term plan. So that doesn't really feel good if you're a woman to know, (laughs) Um, feels, you know, like you're discriminating against people who could become pregnant. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. I'd be happy to dig into that more, but I don't know that it's an add-on or an option, to be honest with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Rorks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Representative Stalker, can you explain um, that do we already catch these folks when they once they've had their child, once they've birthed their baby? We, we catch them at that point. They're allowed to enroll upon the birth of their child. So am I correct in that this bill just allows for us to be able to catch them sooner when they get pregnant um, to ensure that the health of their child through the point of birth? Yes, that's correct. Um, but I think it's also fair to say that there's a lot of people who are walking around uninsured, might find themselves pregnant, giving birth, and they may not even know that they now qualify for that. Um, So then you're getting into things like what resources do people have in their community to help walk them through those types um, of scenarios so that we can get some wraparound services, make sure that people are educated and informed about what is available to them. Um, But yes, to your to your question, this would really just allow us to go upstream and catch people sooner to make sure that they're taking care of their health. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the committee at this time? We do have a motion and a second on the bill. Seeing no other questions, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Representative All? Aye. Representative Bentley? Yes. Representative Bray? Representative Duval? Yes. Representative Fraser Gordon? Yes. Representative Gooch? No. Representative Justice? Yes. Representative Lewis? Yes. Representative Lockett? Yes. Representative McPherson? Yes. Representative Pollock? Yeah. 
Representative Rorick's? Yes. Representative Roberts? Yes. Representative Smith? Yes. Representative Stevenson? Heck yes. Chair Meredith? Yes. House Bill 286 does pass with favorable expression. Same shit on the House floor. Thank you, Representative. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it.